Assalamualaikum and good afternoon. I'm Muhammad Fauzi bin Osman with Mr. Muhammad.
Ah. Ladies and gentlemen, we will continue with the fourth session of our program today. I would like to invite Mrs. Shazalia binti Salim from Electrical Engineering Department of Polytechnic Sultan Azran Shah to share on load calculation for solar system. Without further ado, please welcome Mrs. Shazalia Salim. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good evening to all our student and audience. Right, how are you today? Have you had a lunch? All right, so my name is Shazalia Binti Salim. Okay, I am from department uh, electrical engineering okay, from Polytechnic Sultan Azran Shah. So in this session, I will explain about the load calculation for device used 100 watt of solar panel. Okay. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah, Ibu Abdul Alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursalin. Ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasir li amri wa hilu uqdatan. Nilisan yafkahu qawdi. Rabbi yasir wa lat'asir. Rabbi yasir wa lat'asir. Rabbi yasir wa lat'asir. Amma ba'ah. Alright, so, so I will continue this session. So did you know what equipment that can be used uh, for the solar panel, 100 watt? Okay, so for 100 watt solar panel, uh, this is the circuit diagram for solar panel 100 watt, which is we have we have the charger controller, battery, and uh, DC loop, uh, right? So this, this type of circuit, we call it off-grid uh, circuit, all right? So first, we can uh, uh, let's look to the uh, each component specification. So first, uh, look the solar panel uh, component. All right. 
So we use the monocrystalline solar module for this project. Okay, so usually uh, manufacturing uh, give us a solar module uh, spec, right? So in the specification from the manufacturing, they give us a maximum power and then maximum power voltage, maximum current, open circuit voltage, short circuit current, maximum system voltage, sizing, STC, uh, stand for stand test condition, and then temperature, the AM. All right. So in this rated uh, output, what is important is the power voltage and power current. So this uh, this power uh, this power voltage and power current will make uh, will uh, sorry okay. So from this power voltage and power current, we can know the power maximum for solar uh, power panel, right? Which is hundred watt. So the calculation for solar hundred watt is power is equal to voltage times to current okay 18 volt times to 5.56 ampere which is 0 100.05 watts so equivalent to 100 watts lah so another important uh, information in solar module is stc and temperature so stc is stand for stand test condition right so this uh, stand test condition uh, uh, we can look for the irradiance irradiance in malay we call it sinaran cahaya matahari right so irradiance so maximum irradiance uh, is 1000 watt per per meter square so temperature maximum temperature for solar Solar power panel is 25 degree, degree Celsius. Okay, so this uh, peak sun hour, which is uh, Mr. Fauzi Ghani has told uh, you before, right? So peak sun hour. Peak sun hour is an equivalent measure of total solar irradiance per day. So peak uh, sun hour are not the hours between sunrise and sunset, right? So it's not the same as one hour on the clock. Solar insulation is the amount of solar radiation that fall on the Earth's surface in a given span of time, right? Thus, it makes a sense that the hours between midday and early afternoon are the peak hour for solar radiation since the sun is higher in the sky and solar panel receive the sun's ray at the most direct angle. Conversely, peak the suns don't occur during sunrise and sunset because the sun is positioned at the lower angle in relation to the solar panel. So one peak sun hour is equal to 1000 watt per meter squared. Right, so this is insulation map. So I take this uh, insulation map from the mat, uh, from the website mat.gov.my. Okay. So why we use the insulation map? So we use the insulation map to know the daily sunshine energy produced. So in Malaysia, uh, usually uh, around six, six to 6.5 uh, hours per day. So daily sunshine is 6, point, six to 6.5 hours per day. So here is a Malaysia map. So Polytechnic Sultan Azam Shah, beginning here so from the range we can see the daily sunshine energy produced is six hours for our place so uh, our solar panel is 100 watt time to six hours so we can get the six hours uh, 600 watt per hours per day all right 
So daily sunshine for our uh, place is 600 watt hours per day. So let's take a look for solar charger controller. So here is the solar charger controller. Okay. How we choose the solar charger controller? How we can know that we use the solar charger controller for 10 amp, 20 amp, or etc. So we need to calculate it. So how we calculate it? First, we need to calculate the power solar panel is 100 watt divided by our battery that we use, which is 12 volt. In our case, we use the battery 12 volt. So 100 watt divided by 12 volt is equal to 8.33 amp. So we need to use the solar charger controller more than 8.33 amp. So which is, we can use, we can choose the solar charger controller in a 10 amp, a 10 ampere or and above. Okay. So that's how we choose the solar charger controller. Then we need to know our solar have the power losses. Okay, the power losses is around 30%. From where they get the power losses? First, we get the power losses from the dirty at the solar panel. Okay, if we use a, two, a long time, so our solar panel will we have the dust, right? So that's we make the solar efficiency efficiency will uh, decrease, right? And then uh, the power loss we can get from the voltage drop on the cable going to solar inverter efficiency. And the last one from the charger controller. So the system, we calculate it, uh, power loss is equal to 30%. So from our uh, solar panel, so we have 600 watt hour, Time to 70% uh, is equal to 420 watt hour. From 600, we produce uh, from our solar. So after we uh, calculate it for uh, power loss, so we got only 420 watt hours that we can use for our device, right? So power losses is equal to 600 watt hour minus 420 hours uh, watt hours is equal to 180 watt hours right that is the power losses that we get from 30 percent so what we can use what can i use from the 100 watt of solar okay from 100 watt of solar uh, that produce 600 watt hours so we can use the device uh, such as a laptop, LED light, ceiling fan, smartphone charging. So smartphone charging is different. Uh, different from uh, it depends from the brand. Okay. So I assume the smartphone charging is only ten watt. Okay. So laptop use fifty watts. Then LED light use ten watt. Ceiling fan use 35 watts. Smartphone charging, I assume it as a 10 watts. All right. So here is the hours used. So laptop, we use for four hours per day. So 50 watts times to four hours, we can get the total watt hours is 200 watt hours. And then LED light, 10 watt. Uh, equal to six hours using four per day. So 10 watt times to six hours. So we can get 60 uh, watt hours. So ceiling fan, 35 watts times four hours. So we get 140 total watt hours. So the last one is smartphone charging. 10 watt times to Two hours for charging per day is total 20 
watt hours. So from 420 watt hours that we produce, we can use four device in a day. All right? Uh, so it depends on hours that we use. So. Here is the battery capacity. How we try to uh, use, uh, sorry, uh, battery capacity. So, so for battery capacity, the calculation for battery capacity that we want to know is total load divided by battery volt. So as I mentioned before, so battery volt that we use is 12 volt. So total load that we have from the beginning is 420 uh 420 watt hours so 420 watt hours divided by 12 volt is equal to 35 ampere hours all right so this is the battery capacity that we can uh, have from the battery so uh from the battery we need to know that they are have a depth of discharge okay so that of discharge is uh, specified by manufacturer. So manufacturer will um, give us the depth of uh, discharge, which is in this case, uh, the manufacturer giving us 50%. So what is that of discharge? Later I will, uh, I, will uh, I will show you. All right, so the calculation is from the battery capacity, 35 ampere hours is divided by that of uh, that of discharge is 50% is equal to 70 ampere hour. The maximum battery capacity is 70 uh, hour, ampere hours. Okay, so this is that of discharge. Okay, what is that of discharge? So when we want to be, uh, buy the battery storage, we need to know the depth of discharge. Okay, depth of discharge is the amount of battery capacity that has been used. Most manufacturer will specify the maximum uh, depth of discharge for optimal performance related to the lifetime of the battery after repeated us. Why we need the we need to know the depth of discharge? Okay, we need to know the depth of discharge for our battery for make sure the lifespan of our battery is longer. All right. So depth depth of discharge is important for our battery. Okay, battery storage. So in the battery we have two state, which is state of charger and depth of discharge. State of charge uh, state of charge is a current state of your battery. So if we charge our battery, you can make a hundred percent charging, right? As your smartphone. So uh, the the uh, manufacturing usually they give us the DOD. Uh, I call it DOD, right? So DOD. Uh, for example, uh, for my smartphone have DOD between uh, 20 per 25%. So if my battery has reached 25%, I need to charge again my handphone. Why? Because if I'm not charging my battery uh, after they turn to 90% and below, so my battery lifespan is not getting longer. Uh, so that is so important, our depth of charge, uh, depth, depth of discharge, right? Okay, did you understand? All right, so, okay, we're going back to our project base, uh, base learning in the PISAS. So in our project base, we have the LED light, uh, which is 6 watt. Uh, that we use for 12 hours with, within 7 p.m. to 7, 7 a.m. All right, so 12 hours. So, so total uh, total watt hour that we use for our solar panel that is equal to 72 watts only. So, we can use our solar panel 
to more more device because we just use only 70, 72 only. Okay, so here the the picture that we use a uh, LED light for at the night. All right. So that's all from me. Thank you for your attention. I'm <laughs> 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 Uh, thank you very much for an interesting sharing from Mrs. Saza Alia Salib. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Sorry, we have a, a technical problem. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the next session will continue with uh, technologist Muhammad Fazil Osman and Mr. Muhammad Fidas Muhammad Zubdi.
from Electrical Engineering Department of Polytechnic Sultan Azlan Shah. They will share on wiring and installation of solar panel systems. Without any delay, please welcome Technologist Muhammad Fauzi Osman and Mr. Muhammad Fidaus Muhammad. Assalamualaikum and good afternoon. I'm Muhammad Fauzi bin Osman with Muhammad Zubli. We are from Department of Electrical Engineering, Polytechnic Sultan Azlan Shah, Behrang, Perak, Malaysia. Today, we will discuss on wiring and installation of solar power system. A small solar power system can be divided into six basic parts. First, solar panel. A solar panel will transform solar energy into electricity. Second is solar charge controller. Solar charge controller is used to keep the battery from overcharging by regulating the voltage and current coming from the solar panel to the battery. Number three is battery. Battery will store the excess electricity generated by solar panel. Number four is DC load. Commonly for DC load, we are using LED lamp. Number five is inverter. Inverter will convert direct current DC electricity into alternating current AC electricity. And number six is AC load. Commonly for AC load, we are using socket outlet or AC lamp. This is diagram of solar power system. This diagram shown the connection of basic component that we discussed just now. Now, we discuss how to wiring the solar power system. At the solar charge controller, it has three port for solar panel, battery and DC load. We start with battery connection first. The positive terminal of battery will connect to the positive battery at solar charge controller. The negative terminal of battery we connect to the negative battery at solar charge controller. Next, we connect the solar panel to the solar charge controller. The positive terminal of solar panel, we connect to the positive solar panel at solar charge controller. And the negative terminal of solar panel, we connect to the negative solar panel at solar charge controller. After that, we connect the DC load to the solar charge controller. The positive terminal of LED lamp we connect to the positive load at solar charge controller. And the negative terminal of LED lamp we connect to the negative load at solar charge controller. If our load is alternating current, AC, we must use the inverter. The positive terminal of inverter 
we connect to the positive terminal of the battery and the negative terminal of inverter we connect to the negative terminal of the battery now we move to on site with Mr Muhammad Firdaus bin Muhammad Zubli Now we continue our lesson. What you learn uh, the previous class. So, so now I'm at a location we call that the site location. So we can learn how the installation should be done. Right um, behind me. So should be you can see uh, we have a solar panel uh, at the roof. Right. So number one, is a this is a, we call the rule of thumb, right? Not exactly the rule, just uh, the practically what we we do uh, before we done our installation. So number one, make sure our roof able to support our solar panel, right? In this case, we just using a small uh, solar panel is okay, but let's say we extend our uh, project using a, a bigger solar panel so we need to make sure our roof able to support that solar panel all right okay number one this structure able uh, to support and then we can uh, make sure for information uh, we need to make sure the surrounding uh, solar panel we install no shading I either from the building or the place so we can get the uh, the sun directly with the maximum power right because because when we using the solar panel we 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 understand that uh, efficiency year by year will decrease but we try to get the maximum power generated from our uh, solar panel so how to make the our system solar panel generate uh, the the maximum power we make sure surrounding no shading right no 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 problem dust or whatever okay after we install that uh, solar panel uh, uh, we continue with the the report. we continue uh, we complete the circuit right we complete the circuit uh, make sure we using the our wire uh, just based on our design, not using the long wire, and because we need to consider uh, we need to consider efficiency is very important. So when let's say we use a, a high wire, so more DC losses will occur, and that will uh, reduce our efficiency. So we continue this. This, this is how we call the DB distribution board, right? Inside this uh, DB, I I think you already uh, explained about what inside the DB. So I just uh, recall uh, about the device inside the DB. Just we we look uh, around the installation. So what we what I may, uh, what I mentioned to you before this. So we have a conduit. This this. This one is we have a conduit, so this is uh, to make sure our 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 circuit or our uh, circuit design is is uh, interesting because this is the um, environment, the public area. So no wire, no just just uh, we call the beautiful uh, wiring, right? Protection and this one is LED uh, and. So make sure our our finishing is a good, alright. So you can see it is quite good after installation. So for for your information, right? When we using because we have a we have an inverter in our system. Even we just uh, our our push is a lamp, but we have uh, we have ready with the uh, inverter. So let's say let's say inverter our inverter one hundred forty volt, alright. 
So uh, the, the, uh, let's say our inverter is uh, 63.7 and uh, our our system is 140 volt. So means our inverter able to receive power from two uh, solar panel. So that's why we need before we start the installation, we need to know the value of operate uh, short circuit or operating current for voltage short circuit current. We have, we need to uh, get the value of power maximum. Uh, so this is very important to make sure our design is uh, can able to support our uh, solar system. So this is a uh, uh, device uh, solar system. So this this is a solar charger controller. This is a battery and a connection inside the distribution board. Okay, so we go to the number one. We zoom in. This one is a, a con connection from the uh, solar panel, right? This one is a solar panel, and then uh, go to the battery and go to the load. This one for the load, right? So right now our voltage produced uh, from the solar at the at this moment is uh, 12.9 so the efficiency like uh, about 90% and the degree right now is 32 uh, degree Celsius okay uh, the previous uh, explanation I mentioned about the inverter but because this system our system just using a LED lamp uh, just DC uh, output so we uh, not to put the inverter in this system but what I explained is let's say we extend our project using the, the AC output so we need to use the inverter right okay thank you so this is what uh, this is just summary yeah the detail uh, we can get the either refer the previous lesson or the next we go to the maintenance part but but for your information what i mentioned to you based on the standard testing condition in laboratory all right because for example uh, 225 degrees celsius uh, temperature uh, 1.5 uh, for the air level for the what we call in Malay and and etc. But in the real condition, we cannot get the exactly value what in laboratory. So it's okay. The 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 the, the, the testing the FTC uh, will give us guideline how to calculate the the certain value, right? So. No problem if your real uh, value is not is quite different from the the ideal case. All right? Okay, guys. Thank you very much. See you for the next lesson. Okay, bye bye. Assalamualaikum.
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So before we start, uh, sal uh, selamat siang buat bapak-bapak, uh, ibu-ibu di Form Bali. So I'm Ms. Uh, Muhammad Firdaus and Muhammad Zubli and my partner, Fawdi and Suman. And for your information, for this session, uh, we have a three student from PISAS at the uh, outside. So I think before we start, uh, we continue our session. So we introduce our student. Can you introduce yourself? Uh, Hi, Assalamualaikum. Uh, my name is Muhammad Adi Izzat Bey Muhammad Shah. And I am from Department of Electrical Engineering here in Polytechnic Sultan Azhar Shah. And I'm in my third year. Hai, Assalamualaikum. Uh, nama saya Mama Bipin Hadi Biorun Gaidi uh, daripada Departemen Keju Jabatan Kejuruteraan Bintrik. Sekarang saya pada tahun ketiga. Okay, hai. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Nama saya adalah Nurul Syafiqah Binti Muhammad Nabi. Saya daripada Departemen Kejuruteraan Bintrik Bintrik. Sekarang saya berada di semester ini. Can you hear me? Okay, alright. Uh, selamat siang sekali lagi. So now we at the location where the Solar Street project is installed, right? So uh, we already learn about the input. What is the input in this project? What the output in this project? About the solar controller? About the battery in the chip? Uh, by the theoretical. So now we will uh, show you the real equipment and how to install that equipment. Uh, for your uh, information, the, that project is already done to install. But in here, we will uh, show you how to install, how we install that project. We start with the uh, input. In this case, our input is solar panel. So we go to the solar panel. Come, uh, I will show you the solar panel. This is a, this a, this is a mono crystalline solar panel. So for your information, all the data, the important data, we we'll, we will get, we will get the information from uh, from the labeling. Yeah? This is a solar module. For for example, the maximum power is hundred watt and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So before be, uh, the previous uh, session with uh, Ms. Madam uh, Sazalia uh, share about the calculation. So this import, this uh, point, point is very important before we calculate, uh, do a calculation. Okay, now let we start, we try to uh, evaluate, we try to measure using the, 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 uh, the weather right now. Okay, can, student, can you, uh, uh, follow me and we try to uh, we try to measure uh, the the voltage okay we so alhamdulillah this uh, this weather right now at full Okay, we try to uh, okay. So the you can see the value is increased because the area uh, sun uh, yes the the coverage area the sun uh, directly touch in this solar panel is increased. So the value also increase increase. Eh? Okay, settle for part of the solar panel, but. Uh, we need to consider before we put this solar panel, we need to put at the roof. 
So how to make sure uh, the solar panel not move and stay at the current position? So this is an important point. We need to consider because we will put this solar panel at the roof. But let's say now we have a rain heavily, heavy, heavy, heavy rain, heavy rain, and the strong wind uh, hit this solar panel. So the solar panel will move. So we, we need to make sure the solar panel not move and stay at the current, uh, uh, current position uh, at the roof. So how to do that? So we go, uh, I show you the, the what do you call the equipment, Cik, Mr. Fauzi. Yes. Uh, the, the, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, the phone thing. Okay. All right. Okay. So, show the back. Okay. So, now, we will put this uh, solar panel at the roof. And we need to make sure the solar panel So how to tie that roof and this solar panel together? So we use this one. Can you see uh, this one? Uh, what name is Mr. Yeah, mounting. Okay, mounting, yeah. Mounting breaker or mounting, uh, mounting steel uh, band. This, this one you call mounting steel band. So we use this, uh, this equipment. I put, put here. And then uh, this one will tie with the roof. So uh, put here and put here, put here, and put here, and then we tie at the roof. So the solar panel will uh, yeah, stay. Even uh, we have a uh, rain heavily, and now uh, we have a wind, strong wind. Yeah. So the solar panel not move. All right, any question? Are you understand? All right, okay, thank you. So settle for the part for uh, input, uh, solar panel. Now, we go to the, the another part, so the solar street. Before this, I already show you, uh, in, in my video, we already show you, right. So in our project, in our project, we have a solar controller and we have a battery. And this one is already installed, right? So, so now we... What the cable we use, all right? So we have a solar, we have a solar charger controller. This one is a solar uh, charger controller. And this one is solar charger controller, right? So we have a solar charger controller. So we have a positive and negative from cable uh, from the solar panel. So from the solar panel, we will use the 1.4. I think this one is uh, this one. Ah uh, yes, 4 mm. This one one times 4 mm uh, right. square. Okay, we use this cable. For DC. Ah uh, yeah, and uh, for DC, and then we we put for this positive and negative. Also for the battery. We use the same cable, 4 mm squared. Okay, now this solar charger controller, the, the, the main function to, to make sure our battery not over, overcharging. So we, we also have, yeah, uh, for Fogban and also my, our student, PISAS, we have a point for the load PC. For the load, we use the, another cable. So we use this cable. Can you uh, help me? All right. Okay. So dia punya, so the uh, besar sikit. All right, yeah, 2.5, all right, the different cable, right? Already installed, but I show you this is one is a, our, this cable used in our project. Okay, set up for the solar uh, charger controller. So now we go to the battery. What we can see at the solar battery, the, the red, I think the red color, the probably. Battery, yeah. our battery, red color, and the, actually uh, our battery is 33 ampere hour. But this, this one, I just, uh, yeah, small, I want, just uh, want to show you. Uh, this is example of a battery. We call that a uh, sealed rechargeable battery. All right. So uh, each battery, the same function, either big or not uh, based on 
our project. So this is example, same. Uh, the battery is the same. Uh, we have a positive and negative. Make sure you, we use a rechargeable battery for the solar. Okay. So set up for this part. Uh, this this for our project. Let's say we want to extend our project. All right. Our project use just using a DC uh, load. Now we extend our project. We have use uh, AC load. So we need to use an inverter. Right. This one is an example of inverter. Right. For example, as a inverter, this one for 3000 watt, this one is uh, 500 watt. So this inverter will convert the DC to AC. So we can use for AC load for extend uh, version. Right. Okay. Uh, this is an example, right? In this, in our project, we don't, we not use this uh, power input. Yeah, but the, 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 the topic for a, for the inverter we cover from uh, starting from the morning, right? All right. Okay, set up for this part, and then. Fifteen twenty one. This one is being installed. So this, uh -oh. this one. Okay, already installed. Uh, uh, here and we have a. I think six. Six. Yeah, six. We have a six. Uh, LED. Yeah. This one is uh, one number one and two three four five. Okay. Uh, I already mentioned in uh, the, my previous uh, uh, video with Mr. Fauzi. So we have a LED lamp, but we need to make sure we not we not use uh, in cabling. We not use extra cable because we have a DC loss. DC losses. When we have a high DC losses, mean our efficiency will drop. So make sure when we do the installation. No need to extra cabling. No need to extra wire, I think. Because we not uh, we uh, we do not the the efficiency drop. Alright? Set up for the solar input. Uh, our output is a solar charger and battery. And then now it's a output. Our output is LED in this project. So this is how we install uh our project, yeah, all right. Ah, solar, uh, solar, yes, for solar, uh, solar street project. Okay. Uh, any question from our student? Any question? Any question? Uh, I have a question uh, regarding the battery. Okay. Uh, there are many different type of battery, right? All right. Uh, that one, that one, that one, that one. So. Fifteen twenty four. Cost and price. What important thing? That's why Miss 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 Madam Sazalia already teach how to calculate. So the most important we need to calculate first, and then we know that which which battery will able to supply enough for our load, All right? And then we will choose. But the 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 Ah, uh, the capacity and the we call in Malay is jangka hayat. All right, ah, uh, long lasting. How long lasting that battery based on our chosen? Maybe we we buy from.
Bateri apa-apa saja boleh guna. Contoh hmm. kalau bateri terosak, hmm. adakah kita perlukan guna bateri yang sama ataupun different? Alright. Supposed to be different. Uh, okay. The actually, the battery can use the same battery. Actually, battery not a weak, broken battery. Maybe the charge not enough. So we need to make sure we charge uh, first the battery because the battery, battery name is rechargeable. We need to recharge first and then let's say the, the after recharge, no, no different. So maybe we can replace, but replace the first the uh, same value. Uh, the, replace the same value, uh, right? Okay, Shafika. Okay, any question? No. Okay. All right. Uh, I think this is from us. Uh, the, the sharing from our team, yeah, uh, including Mr. Uh, Mr. Zaino, our cameraman, camera video, and Miss uh, uh, Madam Hasnina. All right. Uh, also in our team. So uh, thank you very much for uh, for us. Uh, thank you very much for our student, Politeknik Sultan Azlan Shah, and also the staff and the student from the Polban. I think uh, all of you can see our face. Yeah? Can Maybe you can give any comment in our chat. Eh? Just say hi, please. It's okay. I, I know we work together. All right. Thank you very much from us. Uh, thank you very much from me, uh, Firdaus from. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fauzi from. Thank you from Daniel. Daniel. Thank you from Lupin. Lupin, eh? Thank you, Papika. All right. Thank you from. Uh, from Hasnina. From Hasnina. And the last one, the, the BS, uh, Mr. Zainul. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Okay. See you again for the, uh, another, another program. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for valuable sharing from both speakers, uh, technologist Muhammad Fauzi Osman and Mr. Muhammad Fidas Muhammad Zuhdi. Ladies and gentlemen, the program will continue with the last speakers, Mrs. Raja Bunisha Anwar Din and Mr. Muhammad Haluddin Abdul Rahim, to talk and share on testing and maintenance. Without ado, please welcome Mrs. Uh, Raja Bunisha and Mr. Haluddin.
Assalamualaikum and very good evening to all viewers. I'm Raju Bunisha binti Anwar Din and my colleague uh, Muhammad Haraluddin bin Abdul Rahim will do some simple sharing on the topic testing and maintenance of solar system. Uh, as been explained before, uh, in this us, um, our project is a standalone system with only DC load. Uh, my friend have explained to you how we uh, conduct the insulation process, how we do the calculation for the load and so on. Okay, so uh, I will explain to you all regarding uh, the basic maintenance job that uh, require and suitable for the uh, standalone system uh, of PV solar panel. Before we go further uh, regarding maintenance, uh, we should know about the benefit that we will earn from conducting this maintenance task. Uh, when we are talking about solar, uh, of course, uh, we are looking forward uh, toward the renewable uh, energy generation. Of course, what we want is a maximum power gain or maximum absorb absorption from the solar panel. In other words, uh, what we want is a system which the performance in optimal level. So we will get the maximum power from the system. Okay. Uh, the next, uh, uh, this uh, maintenance job uh, will enhance the efficiency and of course uh, it will help minimal the losses and then uh, it will also help extend system lifetime and then uh, from it from uh, will will have another benefit which is it will reduce the maintenance cost when we are talking about maintenance it means that we are in the site and of course it is it is important for us to protect ourselves first before we entering the site. So it is compulsory for us to have PPE as required. Uh, PPE means personal protective equipment. One of the basic PPE that uh, we should have is a safety helmet. Uh, of course, uh, everyone know uh, the usage of the safety helmet. The safety helmet is to protect our head, of course, from any falling object or to protect our head um, from the situation, uh, from the unexpected situation. For example, uh, when, you are, um, when you are doing inspection on the solar panel, okay, and you are standing on the roof, Okay, maybe in some situation you can fall down or have faint due to the heat or the sunlight. Okay, so this safety helmet can protect your head from some major injuries. Uh, next, what we have is a glove. Okay. Uh, okay, this glove uh, usually we will use to protect our hand from any harm uh, or electrocution. And then what we have is a safety boot. Okay, a safety boot, of course, as we all know, we want to protect our uh, foot, our leg from any uh, harm situation which is unpredictable, maybe caused by some. Uh, structure in the uh, solar panel or something which can hurt our feet and something.
Okay, next uh, we are going to uh, look about the equipment and tools that we use uh, for conducting the maintenance. Okay, uh, the first uh, equipment that we will use usually is a multimeter. Okay, multimeter we will use to check uh, the current, or maybe for uh, the voltage from the solar panel or the solar controller. Uh, we want to check is it uh, as we expected or as directed from the data sheet and so on. And then we have a clamp meter. Okay, clamp meter usually uh, we will use for uh, clamping the live cable to get the current reading. And then we have a thermographic camera. Okay, thermographic camera we use to shoot on the solar panel to get the reading on the heat uh, from the solar panel. Uh, and then we have uh, uh, tools such as screwdriver, uh, cramping tools, nut drivers, wire striper, uh, which is used for uh, maybe tighten the loosened screw some uh, screws, or there's uh, some situation maybe we have to correct the uh, maybe there's uh, some injuries in the cable, so we have to. Uh, do uh, some new wiring, okay, correct the fault or something. So we need this equipment to help us during the maintenance process. And also uh, for solar system, uh, which uh, we need to make sure the solar panel is always in good condition, especially the surface must be very clean. So we have uh, some uh, another item which is very important uh, when we are talking about the solar panel. We have to have a cleaning brush for cleaning the solar panel. So this is the some basic equipment that we usually bring along during uh, doing the inspection or routine inspection in the site. Basically, there are two types of uh, maintenance that we conduct uh, conducting for solar panel, uh, which is uh, the first one will be uh, shadow maintenance, another one will be the Unshadowed maintenance. Uh, when we are talking about the shadow maintenance, it means that uh, we are looking forward to prevent our solar system from any damage or losses. So what we are conducting is we are doing preventive maintenance. And for unshadowed maintenance, it means that we are uh, correcting or we are repairing uh, any uh, damage or any fault that occur during that moment. Okay, what is preventive maintenance? Uh, as I mentioned before, preventive maintenance means that it's a scheduled maintenance. Okay, uh, it's a routine maintenance or routine inspection that conducted for interval of time. Uh, it can be maybe in daily basis or maybe in weekly and there are some we have to conduct monthly or quarter yearly. Okay, uh, when we are talking about the uh, recommendation uh, execution time, okay, uh, it's recommended that we are conducting this preventive maintenance during the non-peak hours because uh, we don't want to affect the power generation. Okay, for example, in Malaysia, let's say the peak hours will be around 12 o'clock to the uh, 2 o'clock. Okay, so the preventive maintenance can be suggested to be conducted during early morning, maybe 8 o'clock and on, onward, or in the late evening, maybe uh, 5.30 or 6 p.m. onward. 
Okay, um, next, uh, on uh, when we are looking about the expenditure, okay, since this is the uh, maintenance that we already planned, so usually the expenditure will be listed in the budget. So we have uh, no problem on costing everything, okay? Um, Another one, this preventive uh, maintenance usually um, are affected uh, affected to the few condition. Okay, for example, the environmental condition, technology selected, and the warranty terms. Okay, for example, in Malaysia, let's say we know we have to clean the solar panel uh, almost. Uh, let's say every week. Okay, we have to make sure the surface is clean from the dust. Okay, but at the same time, we have to consider in Malaysia, we have a um, quite uh, rainy season. Means that there will be raining uh, all. It means that uh, we have a rain almost every month. So, we can skip uh, the routine on the cleaning the surface of the solar panel. Okay, that is uh, some advantages uh, we have in Malaysia, of course. Preventive maintenance consists of three main tasks, which is visual inspection, servicing, and cleaning. Uh, and the advantage that we that we will gain from this uh, process is uh, we will minimize the downtime. Okay, uh, when we are conducting proper schedule maintenance, means that uh, we are keeping our uh, system in good condition. So there are very very uh, small uh, space for. Uh, for to happen. So, uh, the downtime will be so minimized and uh, we will avoid unnecessary product, production losses and of course, we will improve our uh, system performance to the maximum level and then uh, we will reduce the probability of the equipment failure since we are checking it regularly and Constantly. Okay, this is uh, some activities that uh, evolve in the preventive maintenance. For example, uh, when we are doing a visual inspection, okay, we will check on the structure of the mounting. Uh, we will look at the uh, cable connection. We will look on the check on the nuts. We will look at, at the uh, cables, maybe uh, there are injuries or not, okay? So, when we are doing this checklist, we will find out uh, some observation, okay? Maybe there are some necessary uh, action need to be taken uh, and some repair need to be done on that moment. So, what we'll do is uh, we will uh, correct the uh, fault for that moment. Okay. Uh, next we have is uh, cleaning the module. As I mentioned before, uh, the surface of PV is very important for uh, power generation because we need to ob observe as maximum as energy that we can. Okay. So, uh, we have to ensure the surface of the module always clean all the time. So, we, we, have, uh, we have to do uh, frequent washing uh, for these modules. Uh, next, uh, we are looking for corrective maintenance. Okay, corrective maintenance means that... Uh, Maintenance that we conduct when a fault happen, okay, which means we need to repair that condition. For example, 
let's say uh, there are some blown fuse so we will replace it with a new fuse uh, let's say uh, we have problem with the our pv module uh, it's it been damaged so maybe there are some condition to make sure our system run properly we have to change the module to the new set Basically, corrective maintenance involves of two tasks. First of all, will be diagnose or troubleshoot. Okay, let's say uh, uh, what happened. We will try to troubleshoot and find out what's the cause of the failure. After that, we will uh, conduct the repairing process to overcome uh, the problem. Okay, along this process, uh, there will be some ad disadvantages happen to the system. Okay, there will be unexpected losses in terms of uh, power generation. Okay, means that uh, when we are doing the um, repairing, okay, maybe there are some parts that we need to shut down. Okay, and we are doing the repairing process. So, for that period, we will have no power generation for our system. So, it means that uh, we are uh, having a losses there. Okay. And next, um, in terms of cost, okay, uh, let's say they are need some replacement on uh, equipment. Uh, so, we will have unplanned costing involved for that replacement. And in some situation, uh, it will shorten the equipment lifetime also. So this is uh, some disadvantages uh, which is uh, happen uh, and which is we don't want to happen actually for our system usually. Uh, when we are talking about uh, inspection and fault detection for PV uh, panel, okay, uh, we are looking for dust accumulation. Uh, we have to make sure uh, there are <coughs> no shading on the module and then we have to make sure the physical integrity and finally is the module mismatch. Uh. Okay, what will happen when the uh, dust accumulation or dirt build up in the uh, PV surface? Okay, uh, when there are uh, a lot of uh, dirt build up, okay, the, it will uh, affect the system performance and of course it will uh, reduce the energy output or energy production or energy generation. Okay, so it is very important to us uh, to do a routine uh, cleaning process to make sure the surface of PV always clean so that uh, we can absorb much and as much energy as we can for our generation. Uh, PV system uh, generate electricity based on the amount of sunlight they receive. Uh, therefore, uh, when a shadow is cast on the panel, either maybe by the tree or building nearby or any object block the pathway of the sun falling on the PV, uh, the power output will decrease accordingly. Uh, so, uh, it is very important for us to uh, make sure um, there are no sh shaded happen. Let's say uh, maybe sometimes in certain situation we find out uh, there are uh, trees uh, blocking um, blocking the PV. Okay, so maybe we need to do some trimming on the trees to make sure our PV can receive uh, as maximum sunlight as it should be. Okay, so there are some processes that we need to look forward during this maintenance process. 
Okay, next is uh, physical uh, physical integrity. Okay, uh, when we are conducting um, <coughs> visual inspection, we will look at the uh, solar PV uh, surface. Well, sometimes we will find out there are some uh, tiny crack appear, or sometimes there are uh, delamination appear, or we can see some uh, moisture condensation uh, in certain spot. Okay, so all these actually uh, will affect the uh, lifetime of the module, and of course, it will uh, cause uh, some losses in our power generation or Okay, another situation when we are doing uh, maintenance, sometimes we will find out a uh, situation where the module is mismatched. Okay, uh, for example, in this picture, okay, uh, two module, okay, uh, one of nanocrystalline and another polycrystalline technology be installed in the same system. So what happened is actually, okay, when you mismatch, uh, the module okay damage will happen okay so it will cause a large power losses for the system actually uh, this is the uh, uh, possible condition uh, how the module can be mismatched okay first maybe there are different module technology uh, on the same string, okay, maybe there are differences in the cell processing during the manufacturing, okay, cell or module of the system rating, in same rating, sorry, but different manufacturer, cell or module of different rating, but same manufacturer, okay, different environment condition, partially sh shaded of cell or module, and sometimes uh, it caused by the breaking of the glass cover. Okay, so this is the some situation. How can uh, module mismatch happen uh, in our system? Okay, that's all from me. Uh, so this is the end of part one for the maintenance. Okay, my friend um, Mr. Halaludin will continue for the on-site part of the maintenance. So I will pass to him for the further explanation. Thank you very much. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Uh, I Muhammad Halaluddin bin Abdul Rahim. Uh, for this session, we'll sharing about the maintenance process for a solar photovoltaic system. First of all, we need to know the importance of maintenance process. We should undergo a maintenance process uh, to ensure the performance are at a maximum. Then we can increase the ability of a system or energy harness and also to reduce the probability of the equipment failures. Preventive maintenance involves routine inspection, servicing and cleaning of modules at a scheduled interval of time. It is done in order to minimize downtime and unnecessary production losses. It improves performance increase the availability and reduce the probability of the equipment failures. The main activities under preventive maintenance include uh, mounting structure integrity, hotspots detection and a module cleaning. 
for a routine inspection it involve a mounting structure integrity then we can check the cable connection and also as a visual checking this routine inspection we can do uh, a weekly or a bi-monthly For a maintenance process, is it is necessary to ask to detect the hotspot area. What is a hotspot area? Hotspot area is a one of the most common causes of a solar panel failure or the fire hazard. The hotspot effect occurs when a solar panel is shaded and the current cannot flow around weak cells. Eventually, the current will concentrate in a few cells causing them to overheat and potentially melt. We can detect a hotspot area by using a thermal or IR equipment. In this video, we can see the IR or a thermal equipment are checking the temperature of a solar panel. If the solar panel is overheat, then the panel is broken. So we need to replace a new one to ensure the safety of a, a system. Solar panel cleaning is an essential practice in order to ensure that the performance of the PV system does not degenerate. Dirt build up over the solar arrays can substantially affect the system performance, reduce the energy output reduce any possible savings or revenue but more importantly reduce the life of the panels it is essential to clean the modules regularly to prevent energy loss clean solar panels help to ensure that the system generates optimum electricity <music>
11.59 ok, menghampir jam 12 malam kita datang buat lawatan tapak di di dalam tempat pemasangan lampu solar ok, uh, selamat pagi, sekarang adalah jam 12.02 minit pagi uh, jam 12 minit 2 minit pagi eh. uh, 12 hari bulan so kita datang site tempat pemasangan solar so kita try off uh, lampu kantin so so ini adalah hasil uh, projek solar street JKE so ini kita kat sini kita pakai 1, 2, 3 lampu dan sini ada satu lampu dan sini ada ada satu lampu di atas so kalau kita tengok kat sini di jabatan ni memang gelap memang tak ada lampu koridor kot atau tidak dibuka ok so this is uh, orang kata hasil for Solar Street Project di JKE and maybe for future future project kita akan expand to the this side ataupun koridor ok
Thank you very much for the interesting knowledge from Ms. Uh, Mrs. Raja Bunisha Anwardin and Mr. Muhammad Haruddin Abdul Rahman. Okay, respective guests. Before we end our program today, I would like to invite all of the participants to join the photography session. All guests are requested to turn on their respective cameras and kindly use the program background that has been shared to all guests prior to the beginning of this program. I would like to everybody hand over the platform to the technical community for the photography session. Over to you, technical community. Okay, ready? Okay, Okay, okay. 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 So, <laughs> 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 the end of the photography session okay it marks the end of the today program thank you very much and till we meet again tomorrow at 9 30 okay 9 30 okay thank you bye